Everybody, welcome to the uh, New Year's, uh, the Christmas Eve uh, edition. Thanks for stopping by and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to everybody. We will not be having uh, doing any videos tomorrow since it's Christmas, but today we're gonna go over a couple of things. First, we're gonna talk about is the market overheated? And second, we have to do a giveaway, which I promised everybody, so I better make sure I actually follow through with my promises. So if you stay to the end, we're gonna be giving away a couple of different passes for Benji Bananas. It's the uh, Web3 game that we talked about uh, a couple of times over the last uh, week or so. So we'll do that at the very end and I'll draw and give away those passes so you can earn some free tokens. But this is probably why you're here. And you're here because you're taking a look at the market and you're thinking to yourself, wow, things are really going up pretty high. And that's true. So are we overheated? Well, we'll take a look at some indicators. So the first thing, of course, our market cap is still, if we take a look at the market, it's still 1.76 trillion. It hasn't really buoyed up that much. I mean, over the last month, yes, obviously it has, but over the last week, it's probably been around that 1.65, 1.7, somewhere around there, so pretty good. The big news, of course, everybody talking about is uh, Solana has flipped over BNB, and yesterday it was tight. They were going back and forth, but as of today, you're looking at, uh, I mean, Solana pulls ahead with over six or seven billion dollars more than what Binance Chain is. So I don't think there's going to be too much uh, flipping back and forth unless something uh, catastrophic happens to Solana. And uh, we'll see if I can actually catch up with Tether. But to catch up with Tether, it's got to do essentially a 2x from right now because it's at 47 billion and Tether's at 91 billion. Magic internet money. But are we overheated? And if we take a look as far as like the market itself, are we overheated? We have to take a look at the four-year cycles. Now on this channel, you guys know I'm a big believer in it because it still holds to be true. And we can just see as a quick refresher for people who are new or maybe are just kind of lackadaisical, maybe not thinking about it. In 2012, now of course, Bitcoin came into existence in 2009, right? Genesis, Genesis block, white paper in 2008. That was all because of the financial disaster that was the Great Recession back in those in that day and time frame. But in 2012, we had our first halving, where the amount that's actually being mined by Bitcoin miners is actually halved. And of course, it's uh, caused a little bit of stress in the system, but it is great because it is deflationary. And then of course, on the next year after every single time we've had a halving, we had an all-time high. That happened in 2013. And after we have an all-time high, what happens? Things get overheated because the technology has not caught up and there is not massive, massive adoption. I know people will say, hey, Rob, Bitcoin is, is uh, really popping off and people are using it all over the place. Sure, but not like what you would think. People are owning it and they are treating it as whatever they, they, they believe it is today. Is it a hedge against inflation? Is it a peer-to-peer -peer transaction as the white paper is supposed to be? Is it gold 2.0? Whatever you believe it is, that's what it is. But as far as like mass adoption, I don't think we're at the billion mark yet as people are using it every single day. So we get a dip because of the reason we just talked about. Then of course, in 2015, there's a uh, reset, and then we go back into a halving. And that happened in 2016. 2017, when I first got in, we had an all-time high. What happened after that? Technology didn't catch up. 2018, we have a dip. Then we have a reset. 2020, we had a halving, all-time high, which is where a lot, I think, of people who are watching this video are. This is when you guys came in at an all-time high in 2021. Don't worry, we'll have another one of those. Because in 2022, we had a massive dip. And it's amazing, between the top was roughly November 9th, 2021 for Bitcoin. Not for alts, but for Bitcoin itself. In 2022, the low was roughly November 9th, 2022. It took roughly exactly a year. And it was the same thing in 2017. So we get a big dip. In 2023, we get a reset year where things are kind of jumbled apart. And in 2024, we'll go into another halving. So... If we took a look at that, I just wanted to reference that for what we're gonna go over. But every Sunday, well, usually, not every single Sunday, I try to take a look at what has been going on with just dollar cost averaging. And I just want to show people how it worked. We've talked about dollar cost averaging, we talked about value cost averaging and lump sum. And in a couple of weeks ago, we took a look at lump sum. And of course it beat out dollar cost averaging if you would do it at specific times. Obviously in, in November, 2021, if you lump sum, not a great time. But of course, if you would have lump sum November 2022, congratulations, you're up massively. Good luck timing that. Anyhow, so if we take a look at this, <laughs> if we take a look at this, and we're going to see here that, yeah, we've got, what I want to do was do on September 1st, 2023, and just dollar cost average multiple different altcoins. And what we did is we, we did Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, 
XRP, Cardano, Avalanche has my grandson right there. Hello, Gabe. Avalanche, Doge, Polkadot, Tron, and Chainlink. And we took a look at Bitcoin as well. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to see how it would do. And why did I pick September 1st? Well, it was because I actually thought of this idea around May or June. I kind of got around to it in September. But when we did this, if we take a look at it historically what's been happening, we can see that September is the worst month, and not just for the crypto market, but for the traditional markets as well. So in September, we had, I think it was 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So out of 13 years, 10 of those years were red years, and not just little red years, like big red years, or bad, excuse me, big red months for those years. So I thought to myself, well, September will be a good time to start because I can show people that, hey, it's okay to go down. It's all right to, to be underwater for a little bit of time if you believe in the project and where things are going. And of course, I failed on that because everything started to go up. And it happened in September, October, November, December. So when we took a look over here, if you would have, I don't know, dollar cost average Bitcoin in September and also Ethereum, Solana, XRP, Cardano, Avalanche, Dogecoin, Tron and Chainlink, uh, this is what you'd be at today. You would have invested, if you would have spent $10 a day, every single day, you would have invested about $1,000, $1,150. And coincidentally, crazy enough, you'd be up 260% on AVAX. Everybody talks about how Seoul is doing so great, and it did. But Seoul is only at 255% as of September. Cardano, 94%. Dot, 82%. Chainlink, 95, 65%. Bitcoin 35, Dogecoin 32, Ethan, you can see where I'm at. So just as September, just by doing those things in altcoins, you could do pretty well. <laughs> I got to love family. So then we have that piece, but are we overheated? Have we gone quite far? We'll take a look at this. If we're taking a look at the four year cycles, Let's go back. Let's go back four years. Oops. To 2019, September 1st. There's a reason for why we're gonna do all this. So if we go back, we do the same thing, right? And we're dollar cost averaging the same stuff. Some hasn't even been created yet, right? Solana isn't even there. Wasn't even created anything until 2020. Correct me in the comment section. But if you would have done $10 from September 1st, 2019, and then sold around, let's take the first, the first top, because it was April, then November. That doesn't matter. May, let's go over here. Oops. April 6, eh, April 18, $10 a day from 2019, just 2021. Not that much difference, right? 10 bucks a day, you would have invested 5,960. In a Dogecoin, you'd have over half a million. In Cardano, 112,000. Solana, 80,000, that's pretty good. Link, 53, 50, 42, 32, 32. Doing pretty good. But now let's take a look And we did all that. Let's back this up a little bit. Let's take it from 2019, September 1st. To the ending date. Of 2019. December 24th. Let me refresh it so I can view it. Huh? So if we took it from here, September 1st, and we went just to December 24th, 2019. Again, remember, these are the reset years, right before the halving. If you would have done this whole thing right here, you'd still be underwater. Look at this. 
December 24th, 2019. It actually, in Bitcoin, you'd be down 13%. Doge, 13. Tron, 16%. And Ethereum, 25%. So if we take a look at, again, comparing things, not that everything's going to work out exactly correct, but this time is a little bit different. To break this down again, it's like this. September 1st, 2019, December 24th, 2019, you're down. But if you just stuck around until the blow off top in the, in the big bull run years, this is how much you'd be up. Now take this same time frame, September 1st, 2019, and take a look at it, what it would look like today. There is a big difference between September 2019 to December 2019 as compared to September 2023 to December 2023. And we can see that we are up, I mean, massively, massive, not massively, but pretty well up. So the question then becomes, if we're up so much here in this small time frame, what does that mean when we get to the actual blow off top? Time will only tell, but I can tell you right now, it seems to me that we are way ahead of schedule. But the question is, are we overheated? Well. Let's take a look at this crypto market cap and, and uh, trend line. We are actually, and we can see that as far as like a fair value, this is the red line. Lower band is in the green. And then of course the blow off tops in the, uh, on the upper parts. We can see that, let me blow this up. We can see it. We're not even a fair value. Now that's pretty much par for the course, right? Because that's how things are as far as the markets. We're never like perfectly on the fair market value. We spend a lot of time below, spend a little bit of time above. But I can just tell you right here, we're below the fair market value. That's just one thing. Let me take a look at the NUPL, the net unrealized profits and loss. You can find this chart at looking at Bitcoin, links in the description. Everything else we just talked about was on Ben's website, even that dollar cost average tool, which is free to use, links in the description as well. So we're taking a look at the NUPL, it's derived from market value, realized value, current price of Bitcoin multiplied by that number of coins in circulation. We can see that right now, we're not overvalued. We're getting into that, that range, right? For his optimism and anxiety, but we just got out of the hope and fear. And I mean, barely, barely. What about the Pi Cycle Top, which has, of course, retrospectively taken a look at all the different tops from 2013 to 2017 to 2021. And coincidentally enough, it's uh, nailed them all. So over here, here, eh, it did okay over 2021, but not too bad. But if we take a look as of right now, those bands are way apart. And this is the 350-day moving average times two when it crossed over the 111-day moving average. And you can see when that happens, which had happened over here on April 7, yeah, April 15, 2021, when he had Bitcoin price at 64,000, way apart. So I don't think we're at the blow-off top yet. How about the MVRVZ score? Market value versus realized value. And then the Z-score kind of takes everything out. How far down are we? We are way far down. Now, of course, when you get in the red, red zone, you're way overheated. That happened in 2017, 2013. Same thing again. 2021 barely made it. But look how far down we are. What about the Puel multiple? Of course, this is we're taking like we're taking a look at Bitcoin miner profitability. We're pretty much in the, in the middle range. We're not where it's like heavily undervalued or heavily overvalued. So I don't see as far as Bitcoin goes. And Bitcoin always, always starts first. This one is a new one. You can check it out, the, the Bitcoin cycle master. It's coin value destroy, destroyed by terminal price. And we can see again, where are we? Pretty much right in the center. So most of the things we take a look at, we're not super, super overheated. But does that mean that we can't do a pullback? Of course not. This is crypto. We could have a 40% loss tomorrow. But we take a look at what's overvalued, not so much. However, there is one thing I'd like to caution you with. Time spent and risk bands. This is one of these different indicators that I use. And just so you know, the Bitcoin time spent and risk band right now is actually all the way over here in the 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. And it doesn't spend that much time. And if you've watched the video, which there's a video that I put out and it talks about when I'm going to sell 80% of all my crypto, there's the video itself, you'll know that the time and risk bands is one of those critical ones that I'm going to use. And when we start to get into this 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, this is when I'm gonna start offloading some of that. So as we're getting into this, it will be something to take a look at that maybe 
there's a little opportunity to take profits. Now, some people say, Rob, why would you take profits right now? I'm not saying I'm going to. I'm just saying when it hits there, I got a plan. And that plan has to stay in place. I will not allow myself to deviate unless something crazy happens or like the American government says, hey, we're not going to use the dollar anymore. We're using Bitcoin and that's going to be the, Fed, the uh, world reserve currency. Then I probably won't sell for a bit. But Bitcoin isn't everything. Everything starts with Bitcoin, then it flows into alts. Usually that's what happens. Usually we see a blow off top for Bitcoin, then it starts to decrease, then the alts have blow off tops, and then there's reductions there. So people ask me, well, Rob, what are you doing for the alts? Here's another thing that I use, the risk, da the risk dashboard. And I wanna show you is, see this risk right here in the middle, USD risk, as compared to the different cryptos. Again, what we just talked about, the risk level is 0 0.609. So not like 0 0.65 or 0 0.69, but it's just above that. ETH is pretty high, 0 0.62. ADA, not that high. So probably has a little bit of room to run. DOT, getting up there. AVAX, not too bad, 0 0.2. And LINK, and you can take a look at when you click on these, which is pretty interesting, it'll give you like a price prediction. I know everybody loves these things. I'm not a big fan of price predictions because it's it beholdens you to you thinking like, oh, it's got a link has to go to 87 bucks before I start to think about selling. That's not, you can try that. I tried it last time, worked sometime, didn't work all the time. And uh, you can kind of see where things are going, but uh, that will be chain link. And I'll show you one more Solana at the 1.0 level is $600, which is crazy to think about, but who knows? And these are the things that uh, I take a look at to see if we're overvalued. I think in some points we are, but for me to say, yep, I'm gonna dump everything right now, I don't think it's that time and that's for me, but it's up to you to decide what's the best thing for you. These are what things that I'm doing. I can't tell you what to do, I'm not your dad. I'm definitely not a financial advisor, but that's it for that piece. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, the giveaway. So we put out this tweet, this is for Benji Bananas. And the reason I was talking about this one is because this is a Web2 game since 2013, has 50 million downloads. They're coming over to Web3. Super simple game to use. You don't have to do a lot of thinking. You just download it to your phone and start playing. It's one tap, hyper casual game, which is where most of the gamers actually lie. And I wanted to just kind of show people this is another alternative to like getting into like Star Atlas or some other type of like really intense game. You don't, it doesn't have to be an intense game. I think Web3 is a narrative. So I picked uh, Benjamin as a show people how easy it could actually be for Web3. And I said, hey, I just want you to do this. Uh, just watch the videos, share this post, and then also give me your ID, your game ID, which is what you generate within the game. Of course, I can't track that. But uh, what I was trying to do was to be able to use Twitter Picker, but Twitter Picker, there's a problem with the API as far as like with game IDs. So I can't use that. So what I'm gonna do is just do this. As I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna stop, and the first three game IDs that I see are the winners. So burp, right here. Let's see, random Duracell, I'm gonna follow you. So I can, so I'm gonna message you so you can give me, uh, actually I'm, I'm gonna follow you, but I'm gonna have uh, Benji Bananas reach out, reach out to you for uh, the pass. Oh, El Bicho made it. I think I'm El Bicho, I'm already following you. So El Bicho is one. I know actually El Bicho because he won the last one. And uh, Taylor Washburn. Congratulations. So Taylor Washburn, El Bicho, and Random, Random Duracell. Congratulations, you just won the passes to play and swing and actually earn the, the tokens for Benjamin. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that is it for today.